Allow me to explain the equation that is today's subject matter. A sedan, which is becoming more rare as time goes on. This one's a small one. Uh, did I mention it's a Mercedes? Uh, the engine, four cylinders, mounted transversely. That should tell you there's something different going on, at least for us here in the U.S. Uh, front wheel drive, but technically this one's all wheel drive, but however, most of the time it runs as front wheel drive unless there's load or bad weather. So with that, uh, can it pull us up a rather steep hill? Oh, a little slow. Oh, it's, it's coming alive. Oh, she's gone. And this is in the eco mode. And let's try that again. I'm going to go into sport mode. No difference whatsoever when you're in sport mode, at least in the throttle mapping. But overall, a uh, very good college drive. I am on the comfort mode, so this is the most basic on all the mappings, throttle steering. There isn't any adjustable dampers here to worry about, and it's overboosted. The steering is very much like a Honda, a Toyota, maybe a little bit more feedback than those, but it's definitely overboosted. However, let's switch up to sport. Push a little harder on this turn. Please don't try this at home. There is a difference. You know, you and I have been driving a lot of Mercedes as of late, more performance oriented versions. And I've complained to you about the steering, that there just is not enough weight feedback, especially in AMG versions. I think there definitely should be some more weight there. Here, it's more balanced for the job at hand. The only A-B test that you and I have had recently was in another front wheel drive Mercedes, the uh, GLB. There we got to drive both the 4Matic as well as the two wheel drive, and there really wasn't a huge difference in brake performance between the drive systems. Remember a couple of months ago, you and I drove the CLS AMG 53 Santa Maria Madre de Dios. That is currently my favorite Mercedes sedan design, but that car, it, it stood out, at least to me, for a lot of reasons. And the other was the Trek 48 volt electrical system, but it was also these wheels. Um, that car has the 19 inch AMG wheels, which these are exactly the same. They are optional and they work in conjunction with another option as well as the design of this car, which I would argue has been ripped off from the CLS. You just, if you squint really hard, you can see how they took the design from the CLS. It's just the proportions aren't the same. But the combination of the design with the bigger wheels, and then they call it the lowered comfort suspension so as not to confuse it with a sports suspension. But when you look at this A, like serial number ending, I think 35, um, it looks unlike any other A-class that I have seen on the road. Not trying to duplicate our acceleration test. Instead, need to understand the transmission because this, not a torque converter, dual clutch. With that, Shelby. The delay is definitely off the line because of that transmission. It takes some time to figure out what the hell it wants to do, uh, but once it's up to speed, it's virtually imperceptible that this is a dual clutch over, say, a Mercedes with a torque converter. Really, you know what they're comparing this against is a BMW, because BMW has gone completely over to torque converters after many failed attempts with dual clutches. Now, you should see the inside the Motoman studio with Albert Bierman. So he was 30 years at BMW, and he was the one who spearheaded all of that uh, single clutch and dual clutch transmission development. And the history he shares with us about how they came to be and how the plug got pulled on them and why they're all torque converters in BMW M's nowadays. It, I'll just let him tell you. Click on this link above and watch that episode. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game in mind, the options game with today's contestant, Mercedes-Benz A220 for Maddox sedan for a base price of you know what, an interlude before we jump into the game, you are most likely looking at that thinking, well, it's the most basic, at least in the US, Mercedes-Benz on offer, so it's probably going to be a short round of the game. You would be dead wrong. So belt in, base price, $34,500. I'd like to point out that if it was a two-wheel drive, meaning front-wheel drive, it would be $2,000 less. Then we add a stunning shade of mountain gray. I don't say stunning because it's attractive. I am not a fan of grays and silvers. They don't do anything for the design, but in this case, hides the dirt 
unlike any other color, so well worth the $720 price of admission. But what really makes this color work are two things. Number one, the classic red and black leather interior, two-tone interior, $1,450. And then most importantly, the natural grain, black linden wood on the dash. I don't know why all Mercedes don't have this, because it's a Mercedes, man. You're not buying a McLaren, so look, go easy with the carbon fiber, $325. To that, we add the wheels we talked about earlier, 19-inch AMG wheels for $500, and then a real bargain, the uh, high-performance tires, summer tires, uh, no charge. Uh, then there is a garage door opener. Really, you're going to charge me extra for a garage door opener? $280, uh, the heated and cooled front seats, Arguably one of the more important options, $1,030. And then the head-up display, man. This, it's an unusually good uh, setup in this car, $990. And then, seriously, we've talked about this before. Mercedes, you're really gonna charge me extra for a satellite radio that comes standard in Hyundais, $460. Then the uh, lowered comfort uh, suspension, which we talked about earlier, $290. And then there's the option we must have in all Mercedes and Porsche, and that is the Burmester. This one's a bargain at $850. And then, kind of like the satellite radio, man, you're really gonna charge me for LED, even though there's 64 colors. LEDs, they cost five bucks. This is $310. Think again about that. Then we move on to the packages, and you thought we were done. Uh, premium package, which is the bigger screens, this is fitted with seven inch screens as standard, but uh, for an additional $1,550, uh, one can have bigger screens as well as the keyless go thing. In any event, let's press on to the exterior lighting package. That is the adaptive high beam headlights for $900. The multimedia package, we've talked about this in other Mercedes episodes. Here, uh, this is the answer to why would anybody get navigation from the factory when everybody has a phone? The answer is augmented reality on the maps. Very cool. And in this case, there's an HD navigation system, which also does the time shift for the radio, $1,150. Uh, then there is the AMG line which is one of the reasons why this particular car looks so attractive. Uh, the grill changes, the exhaust tips change, and the front brakes are vented for, wow, $2,310. I don't know if I need AMG line that much. Then the park assist, we've seen this on every other Mercedes we've driven. That's the surround view cameras and park assist. But in this case, it adds the, uh, the forward camera. So whenever you're at a light, the forward camera automatically comes on in that 10 inch screen. I don't know if I like that or don't. Actually, let me know, do you guys like that? Uh, $1,090. Then the driver's assistance package, which is the Distronic, the lane keep assist, the active brake, and blah, 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 more safety stuff, $2,250. And then finally, we add the destination and handling of $995 for a total suggested retail price of, are you ready for this? The most basic Mercedes on offer. $51,950. Technically, this is the first Mercedes to come to the US with this whole MBUX system. And I will say, a pilot that wants toggle switches and knobs, real tactile feel, looks at this and like, this is a disaster. But now that I've used it more and understand where things are, like for example, to tune the radio, this thing up here, just hit it there, and then the radio choices come up. This is the presets in any application, even in Apple CarPlay. And speaking of Apple CarPlay, there is one very annoying thing about that. And I've noticed this in recent Mercedes, it does not take up the whole screen. I do not know why they do this. I cannot believe they released it like this. No matter what you do, and this is what iOS 13, a disaster, please do not update your phone if you do that. But that has nothing to do with Mercedes. So even if I get into the regular apps here, it doesn't take up the 16 by nine screen, which BMW does, Hyundai, everybody does it with the exception of Mercedes at this point. Another note about this specific MBUX and this A220, this one is fitted with a head-up display and wow, this one, 
one of the better ones I've seen because you can put in not just the data for speed, engine speed, or the automatic cruise control. It also includes, you can change it into MPG readouts or navigation readouts. One of the more useful integrations of a head-up display I've seen. Then, the real pet peeve is this thing here. It, once you get to, to understand how it works, it's usable, but this combined with this touch sensitive stuff on either side of the steering wheel, so you can adjust the screen here, you can adjust the screen here. This is too fussy. Uh, this needs real hard buttons or a toggle switch, or maybe a real five way switch would work there. And here, how about like a knob as opposed to this trackpad? A trackpad is for a computer. Uh, other than that, you're doing a great job in here, especially the tactile feel like this particular one, wunderbar. You and I need to look at this options game in a second light. Uh, most of you know I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan, so it won't surprise you to know I'm a big fan of percentages. So when you look at the options, $16,455 of them as a percentage of the base price of a Formatic A220, it's almost 50% of the $34,500 base price. Now, you could look at it as A, oh my God, I can get an entry level E Class or 5 Series for that, or B, one could look at it as an amazing used car bargain. Because you and I both know most of these are leased, so it'll end up at like a Mercedes store, and you'll see this and four other A Classes next to it. But those other A Classes, we'll have maybe two packages and maybe three options. And then there'll be this one with everything in it, but it'll only be maybe a grand, two grand more, if that. So when you consider the depreciation from 16,000, almost $500, down to about a thousand or two in difference to get the one that is so much better than the four lease specials that were next to it, then you know what? It is a bargain.